Hey, it's uh, January 14th, 2012. You're viewing and listening to the Nerd Stalker Tech Week podcast number 18. I'm Greg Voria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter, and you are? I'm Adolfo Ferranda, at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. Hi, everyone. Hi, Greg. Hey, man. Uh, hey, happy weekend, huh? So it was kind of a short week, but uh, you had some interesting tweets this week. Uh, uh, there's some new news about SOPA and PIPA. Yeah, man. So, yeah, the White House has come out, uh, their staff actually, and rejected SOPA and PIPA. So uh, I will tell you a little bit more about this here. This one comes from, uh, where does it come from? Boing Boing, actually. Thanks to those guys. Cory Doctorow, like usual, coming through. Uh, so he says here that the ranking members of the Obama administration have published a memo condemning the approach taken in SOPA and PIPA, the punishing pending internet bills that establish and export a censorship regime in the name of fighting copyright infringement. Right on. Uh, it said that we must avoid new cybersecurity risks or disrupting the underlying architecture of the internet. Proposed laws must not tamper with the technical architecture of the internet through manipulation of DNS, uh, foundation of internet security. And uh, it goes on and on about that kind of stuff. And um, wow. So, you know, in your face, uh, Lamar Smith and, and whoever the other idiot who wrote this, you know, tried to write the, this kind of thing. Uh, they've taken out actually the provision regarding us, uh, you know, killing the DNS essentially. Yeah, and, that's uh, what I heard. Yeah. And it's still and it's still an awful thing. So I, this is awesome, you know. In a future uh, related story later on that we're going to be talking about here, um, mm. uh, it's uh, any anyways, anyways, yeah, great great story about yeah, Obama we'll with, with these guys. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So that's refreshing, but it's still a horrible thing. Uh, I'm sure they're going to come back with some sort of mutation of this thing, even possibly without the DNS thing, because they never give up. So always hey, they, be vigilant. They give us news uh, fodder every week, so they might as well just keep on going. It'll just give us something to talk about every yeah, week. So, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of something to talk about, tell us about this flagship uh, Apple uh, store thing oh, in Beijing. Oh, my God. Well, and the chaos. Well, <laughs> I saw yeah, the pictures. It, well, it's a crazy thing, right? Because um, what, what happened is is that, you know, there was people waiting just like anything, like like here, you know, overnight. But, you know, the problem in China is is that most of the people waiting in line are people who are going to buy one, two, or three of them, or they're waiting for another person who had paid them to be in line. Ah. And so what happened was is that um, in, in the Beijing store, mm. um, they they didn't have any. Oh. <laughs> they, they had some. And... and <laughs> Basically, people just went berserk, and um, you know, I asked a lot of my Chinese friends about, you know, why do they use eggs? Well, you know, it doesn't really hurt people, but it it, it sends a message. <laughs> I guess they're better than rocks. I guess it's better than rocks. And and so they actually they have, egg know, the that, store, is what you're saying? They actually egg this place, or what? Egg, yeah, egg the stores. Wow. Uh, in fact. The, the Beijing um, riot police had to get get involved. In fact, uh, we'll post a video link to that one because I have a I have a link to that. Awesome. And um, and and actually, Apple issued uh, later uh, that uh, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna sell in store iPhone 4s in China it, it, at the Beijing store until until you know, wow. everyone gets a grip. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, wow. and gets a grip on themselves. So, so uh, you know, th there's just kind of like some pretty wild things happening there. I, I I was just so surprised when I looked at that video. It was pretty amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. This is the country where the the actual iPhone is manufactured too, and they're saying you know and there's a shortage, right? Awesome. I mean, the the irony there, right? Hey, next, uh, there's this uh, new free open port for Android called uh, Cyanogen Mod. Yeah, so um, Cyanogen, Cyanogen Mod, uh, whatever mods. it is. Yeah, I, nah, I don't know. Um, it looks like, you know, it's been gaining more and more traction. I think they're up to over a million actual installs now, actual users, uh, which is pretty wow. incredible on the Android thing. So um, so what I uh, really like the way that... Uh, you know, there was a thought piece on it here that uh, Cyanogen, the writer says he really likes the way that the Cyanogen mod exerts force on the Android ecosystem, right? Uh, back when Google was unwilling to ship a tethering app, even for Google experience phones like the Nexus One, Cyanogen mod came, uh, gave users the choice to tether. Um, he says, I think that the number of users who went 
To the fork freaked out both Google and the carriers, and in any event, uh, tethering quickly became an official feature of Android. How cool is that? So, like, Whoa. from this sort of Whoa. modded operating system uh, comes a feature that just by the sheer, you know, force of, you know, what they were doing comes to, to Android mm. itself, right, to within a native in Android. Uh, so now Sina Jamad is toying with the idea of a banned app store consisting of apps that were <laughs> that they were banned from Google Marketplace for quote no good reason. Generally because they were threatened they threatened Google or they were threatened by Google or the carriers in some way, right? Um, so there's this uh, cat named uh, Kaushik Duta, forgive me if I'm butchering that name, uh, one of the CyanogenMod team members, he approached Amazon with this idea of bundling their app store in CyanogenMod uh, with the provision that Amazon would give CyanogenMod a portion of the sales. Uh, sadly, Amazon wow. brushed uh, Duta off, uh, so it would appear that this isn't going to happen uh, in the short term, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Still, it appears that uh, there are a number of Google Plus uh, users on Google Plus that are excited about the project, so hopefully they're hoping it'll come to fruition. Uh, Duta's proposed Thanks. store will be open source, so it would be available to any custom ROM, not uh, just Cyanogen mods. So that's super cool, you know, that these uh, these mods, these these ROMs are, are, uh, are, you can just throw them on any Android phone, and you can just sort of bypass the sort of normal android experience for these custom flavors gosh amazing very so, interesting so explain to me is this is just this basically another fort version of <laughs> yes. of, of android yeah or? it is basically yeah yeah uh, that's what you got here so uh, and there are plenty of them but this is probably this i'm sure is the most popular one widely used very stable you can actually feel very comfortable that's this is sort of the threat to google is these something like this where you know, once right. someone actually takes the leap and goes with one of these, you worry about future upgrades and installs, right? But their upgrades have been very consistent, very smooth, keeping up with everything. Um, I see. So, so the experience has been quite good, actually. So there are, mm. there's, you know, there's a large base and they're a very loyal base of users. Mm. Wow. So That's hats off cool. to, to Sina Jamad. Uh, keep up the great work. Um, so Greg, Twitter. Lashing yes. out at Google hey. search changes. What is this? <laughs> well, it was an interesting story this week. Um, basically, uh, I caught that uh, through a, a, a Reuters feed on my uh, Google Reader. Um, Twitter lashed out at Go changes Google Inc. Uh, unveiled for their its search engine on Tuesday, describing the changes as bad or for consumers and for web publishers. Um, so they they issued a short um you know, a uh, statement about some of these changes that Google made uh, this week, uh, not 140 characters, but a little bit more than that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, they said, as we've seen time and time again, uh, news breaks first on Twitter. As a result, Twitter accounts and tweets are often the most relevant search results, uh, uh, the company said in a statement. Now, we're concerned that in the as a result of Google's changes, finding the information will be much harder for everyone, and we think that that's bad for the people, publishers, news organizations, and Twitter users. Um, uh, Twitter's criticism came uh, hours after Google announced this, these new features aimed at making search results more personalized, uh, underscored the growing competition between the web companies and stuff like that. And it comes a time when Google is facing antitrust scrutiny for favoring its own services like Google+, Plus, right, mm. <laughs> in its search results, which came out this week as well, right? Wow. Um, so, uh, you know, Google kind of came back, you know, in a public notice saying that, you know, we were a bit surprised by Twitter's comment about search plus uh, your world because they chose not to renew their agreement with us last summer. <laughs> I thought that was kind of interesting, right, right. you know. You know, and, and, and you know the 2009 agreement that they had it allowed Google actually to offer a real time feed of Twitter messages within its search results actually, hmm. but it expired in July and and they chose not know, to renew. Uh, wow. I heard uh, the same yeah, was the so, case, something for uh, Facebook, too, that they would love to include those results also, but Facebook cho chooses not to open their pipe, their fire hose, so to speak, to Google, which makes perfect sense, right? Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, Facebook search is actually is, is pretty popular, if you think about it. It, 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 it. it comes out there on the web pretty well uh, when I do the searches there, so... Hmm. Um, the thing, you know, the thing, I guess, the large thing is what they're they're finding too, and is, is that I mean, Facebook hasn't done a really great job. I was wondering when they were going to release some sort of like search engine, right, or something like that. That 
because oftentimes I'll go to Facebook and I'll and I'll ask friends, hey, where's where do you guys suggest going to pizza in San Francisco, right? Instead of Googling right, it or right. something like that. Or, right, right. I don't know. Especially if you're in there. I, I mean, you know, I put a lot of search results and it, it comes, the, like I said, it comes the web and I, I get some pretty interesting results yeah, sometimes. Yeah. But it isn't as good as Google, of course. So what's this next one? I saw a tweet uh, came out this week. Uh, Samsung merging its beta uh, or beta Bada. operating yeah. system with Intel back. Uh, Tizen. Wow. Tizen. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, um <laughs> So yeah, Samsung said it's working on merging its homegrown Bada smartphone operating system with Tizen, an operating system project the company is conducting with the chip maker Intel. Intel, right? So this is really interesting. Uh, observers have long wondered how the Korean tech giant will juggle its many operating systems. Samsung supports at least four mo mobile operating systems and at least two different television operating systems. Uh, Bada has found surprising traction, especially given the fact uh, that it's only available in certain non-U.S. markets. Uh, in 2011, uh, nice. Bada phones made up about 2% of the global smartphone market. That's greater wow. than the share held by Microsoft Windows Phone. So, um, <laughs> I mean, these guys are, yeah, these guys are, are not all that far behind. And then when you think about it, you know, we did a, the previous story in our last podcast about uh, the biggest right. threat to Google being Samsung, uh, because Samsung is the phone that is selling the hottest, um, the hottest selling Android phone by far, uh, yeah. yes, well above yes. HTC and, and Motorola mm. so far mm. that um, they, you know, they could exert some power on Google. And if Google doesn't play along, then it makes sense for for them to start developing something in house, and well, looky here, we hear about this, uh, you know, Bada Tizen uh, uh, work, you know, operating system that's in process. Bada is a fully flushed out uh, phone operating system mm -hmm. right now, and with this Tizen thing, it's it's uh, this merger is actually in in it's uh, in progress right now. So they're actually doing programming for this. Uh, I've seen some wow. screenshots of Bada. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but neither is Android, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, so this is a uh, you know they going way back as we've been saying from episode to episode they laughed at us about everyone uh, moving away possibly these manufacturers move away from uh, Android and well looky here. God, you know Samsung and Intel have an interesting relationship because you know as chip companies they they compete very heavily with themselves. In fact, I think this year Samsung reached the number one chip company actually in the wow. world now, uh, wow. displacing Intel. Wow. Um, you know, because of the lack of sales uh, on the Intel side, on the mobile side, right? But, you know, I think that, didn't, they, didn't we, like, I don't know, our second podcast or whatever, uh, They talk, we talked about Migo, right? That's <laughs> also, right. And they yeah. picked up that one, right? Yeah. Too? yeah. So that's probably one of the four. And, yes. Wow. Yes, it is. Wow. Yes, wow. it is. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, that's, right, that's pretty good. So, Greg, that's pretty good. what is this? Yeah. I, we yes. can get real fruit from farming? Yeah, um, it's from Asagen, which is a great tech source from Japan in English, uh, posted yesterday by uh, Chiho Komoria. Um, Artifice Inc. has uh, released a Android AR Arita uh, Mandarin Orange Plantation sim, sim game uh, that allows you to actually try out uh, cultivating uh, Mandarin oranges. You know, the download's free. Well, the interesting thing I thought about this sim app was that if you do improve the uh, Mandarin Orange's quality, uh, you'll get an online application ticket. And if you use that to subscribe online, you could actually get a uh, Mandarin Orange sent to you, <laughs> a real one. Oh, wow. And I thought that was kind of cool. Clever. Um, you know, it uses augmented reality. That's why it's called AR Arita. Oh, cool. Uh, but that area of Japan uh, or that city of Japan is very famous for making Mandarin Oranges. So, um you know, Indeed. it's it's really kind. Of, I thought that was kind of cool when I saw that because yeah, it's fun. like it's unique. You know, none of us when we play these virtual things or do virtual things get anything right, physical tangible anymore, or real. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So, so I thought that was kind of different that right. they were actually, you know, if you improved its quality, you could actually get one. Hey, you, you can know? go so, buy a carton of smokes and uh, save up your camel bucks and get like a, you know. A... <laughs> Camel hat or something like that, right? Yeah, there I want you my, go. Yeah, I want my, man, my whatever it is. My Your Mandarin mango. orange. Yeah, my, my mango. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Hey, uh, Rupert Mur Murdoch is in the news. Yeah, man. <laughs> that guy. Jeez. What's going on there? So uh, Drew Olinoff from the Next Web, our, our friend over there, uh, it's funny because he's, he's calling Rupert Mur Murdoch the new uh, shit my my 
dad says guy, you know, um, just from the stuff he's tweeting out. So he says, uh, today, Rupert Murdoch made it clear that he's a supporter of SOPA and targets Google as a main offender in piracy. Uh, check out his latest tweets. Um, so Rupert Murdoch on uh, January 14th, January 12th, or January 12th, excuse me, says something like, uh, so Obama has thrown his lot with Silicon Valley paymasters who threaten all software creators with piracy, plain thievery. This is from the Rupert Mur- Murdoch uh, Twitter account. So this touches back to the original, the first story that we we spoke about, right? And he also tweeted a follow-up saying, uh, piracy leader is Google who streams movies free, sells advertisings around them. No wonder pouring millions into lobbying. Uh, so clear, clearly, you know, uh, Drew says, uh, clearly Murdoch is referring to Google's YouTube product, which at times has come under fire for allowing copyrighted content to live on its servers. However, sure. the company has sure. put in numerous technical measures to stop these type of infractions. Uh, what has Murdoch so upset today? We're not totally sure, he says, but it's likely it has to do with the, today's announcement. The White House uh, isn't too fond of soap, uh, the original announcement that we, uh, the story that we covered here. So it's funny yeah, to hear exactly. these, um, you know, these one percenters or whatever you want to call them, you know, <laughs> um, finally getting upset because someone's grown a spine and finally stood up to some, some really stupid laws, you know, or potential stupid oh. laws. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's so weird with a lot of these, uh, lobbyists, you, you really, as a, as a, as a normal person like you or I, it's really hard to kind of see through some of this, you know, this kind of, um, you know, fake facade they put up of, of something that looks good. Right. Yeah. And, and so, you know, all of us kind of like sit there going like, you know, you know, we really distrust, I think most of us distrust, you know, a lot of these things because mm-hmm. we just, you know, we're not sure where the truth is behind yeah, yeah. all this. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's funny yeah. to see these politicians now. I mean, it's like rats off a sinking ship just running away from like Sopa <laughs> and Pippa right now, you know, and the ones left are just like, you know, it's like the game's still over, but they're still trying to, you know, just like save face, you know, and they've yeah, just completely exactly. been shut out, you know, in a in some sort of game or something. Yeah, exactly. Gosh, rather, that's crazy. Rather sad. That's but crazy. anyways, uh, Greg, so Kindle yeah. Fire adds fuel to tablet market growth. Tell us more. Yes, um, eMarketer, I follow them quickly uh, a, a lot. Uh, they have data for you know most of, most anything that you think of, um, mm. and it's a really good data source if you want to go check them out. But uh, yesterday, um, you know, cert, they they reported that search interest for Kindle Fire already surpassed Barnes and Noble Nook, and mm. but it was really a whole report on Kindle Fire. You should check it out. We'll put the link up. But um, you know. Mm. You know, in it, in the in this short report, they say that you know Amazon has sold 3.9 million uh, Kindle Fire tablets, according to I, IHS I Supply hmm. um, source, and um, you know, and by that, Kindle Fire is really contributing to the overall mo- uh, monumental growth of the tablet device hmm. marketplace. They say, mm-hmm. you know, with 3.9, they're number two, right, hmm. uh, behind uh, Apple, which is still <laughs> <laughs> far way, way ahead away. Of everyone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, you know, they have a long way, you know, they need to do a, a couple more quarters of, of that uh, <laughs> stuff yeah, to even we'll catch see. up to them. And, yeah, uh, yeah but so. but they also said that um, uh, after they announced that uh, the fire, I think it was mid-November, um, Google search interest in the Kingle fire dropped you know, jumped to like 335%. So, you know, $199 tablet. You know some pretty cool things. Content from Amazon, you know, it, for for a low price tablet, it isn't a bad buy probably. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. So my I, advice would be, yeah, people, think, <laughs> wait till March. Yes. A new iPad's gonna yes. come out, and then you can buy the iPad One very cheap, I suspect, and uh, the iPad Two even probably somewhat cheaper as well. So save your pennies. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I, that's and, just me. And there's other. I, there's well, there's other Android, uh, right? One from Google coming out, okay. <laughs> right? And the so, mythical Windows uh, tablets also. Yeah, yeah. We're yes. uh, Windows eight was actually running on a prototype at CES. Uh, mm, nice. With a, what nice. was it, an ARM chip in it actually too. So, but it had ooh, an, it had ooh. a fan in it also. <laughs> yeah, and it, it was bulkier. Only, uh, 
A little bit it's bulky. It's only eighth inch thick, but it has a three point yeah. five inch muffin pan associated with it. Save your pennies. <laughs> Wait till March, people. Get an iPad. Oh gosh. Whatever. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So it's tip time, Greg. Tip time. Tip time. Tip time. Tip time. Hey, um, well, you know, they finally released this. We saw this at SF New Tech, and if you guys follow our listeners out there and the viewers out there who follow SF New Tech. Um, uh, it was at SF Japan Night, which we uh, which we uh, sponsored. Um, it was uh, the app called Grow, mm. and um, this app, uh, you know, it's it's basically a social tipping platform for bloggers. And cool. um, uh, they released it, and as of uh, January sixth, they had like three point six million um, uh, placements on pages. Ooh. So wow, people uh, like to I use the internet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is cool. Uh, you better put that button on our man. Yeah, gosh. <laughs> and so, uh, get, you know, growth. go check them out. Yeah, go check them out. Um, we'll put the link up there on um, on like we do on all our uh, news stories. And uh, you know, I think I uh, it's viable. You might be able to you know catch a couple of bucks for a lot of your blog posts out there. So right on, right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, dude, what's yours? So, yeah, my tip is uh, an app called iKeyboard Remote, which controls music on an iOS device from your keyboard. Um, so with this thing, if you use your iOS to play uh, device to play music on your uh, stereo, you usually have to stand up and walk over to it. Oh, and thanks to Lifehacker for this. Uh, in order to uh, skip a song, iKeyboard Remote is a desktop application that keeps you from having to walk over to your stereo by controlling the basic music playing functions from your keyboard. Uh, iKeyboard Remote uses a Bluetooth connection between your computer and your oh, iOS nice. device. So uh, nice. with, with Bluetooth enabled on both devices, iKeyboard Remote will walk mm. you through the process of pairing the two together. After the two are communicating with each other, you control your iOS device music playback using the media keys of your keyboard. Since it's Bluetooth, the range isn't phenomenal. But uh, if you often have your device connected to a stereo, there's a bit out of reach from your computer. This is a great way to stay in control. iKeyboard Remote is a free download from the you know Mac App Store. So go get it. Uh, pretty cool i'm like I'm putting it on my stuff right now so so you don't need this anymore <laughs> <laughs> you know is that what you're telling geez, me <laughs> yeah i think we're going to see a lot more of those with these smart tvs that we've been seeing at ces you know so <laughs> oh, <laughs> look out people. yeah i mean with bluetooth i, I love bluetooth <laughs> you know there's a lot of great you know great ways to connect to devices that way so yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's cool Hey, so um, events this week, my friend, or yes. coming up? So as we mentioned last episode, we are a proud media sponsor of the Node Summit, here in the, which is going to be happening here in San Francisco. Node Summit is a two-day conference at the Mission Bay Conference Center in San Francisco. It'll be happening January 24th through 25th, all day of this year. Uh, for more information, please go to nodesummit.com and register. There's going to be some incredible speakers there from some amazing industries, some seriously amazing industries. The creator of Node himself will be there. Uh, it's going to be phenomenal. So check it out, Node Summit. And uh, Greg, SF New Tech, what's happening? Hey, SF New Tech, uh, January 25th, uh, meet and see Tethras, IQ Engines, Cappy, Heard About, RAVN, and more. Um, doors open at 530 at uh, 119 Utah Street, the Mighty Nightclub. And uh, the pitches start at 730. And uh, come see me. I'll be doing the Ustream there, and uh, I can interview if you have something to say. So, yeah. yeah so listen cool. listen to Greg and or watch it free at sfnewtech.com forward slash live for the free uh, web Thank stream. You. And uh, Thank you. If you want to, uh, can you let us know if they want to contribute any stories? Uh, how can they do that? Yeah. Uh, uh, please use the hashtag NRDSTK. Um, uh, and uh, you could also follow us on nerdstalker.com. Um, and, you know, please uh, look to the iTunes store for our podcast. You could uh, subscribe to it and download it there um, and give us a rating. Uh, you know, our, we want to hear from you. And uh, we also are on YouTube um, at NerdStalker TV. Great. And uh, Adolfo, where can we find you? You can find, uh, reach out to me at NerdStalker on Twitter. You can email me, Adolfo, at NerdStalker. How about you, Greg? Yeah, well, you can find me under Greg Valoria, uh, at SocialGreg on Twitter, and you can email me at SocialGregSF at gmail.com. So, anyway, um, have a great weekend uh, out there, and uh, we'll be seeing you next week. Yeah, happy holidays, everyone. Enjoy. All right. All See right. You. Be careful out there.